everybody, and welcome to Monkey and Manimals Movie Missions. I am Monkey Jones. I am dead on the inside. And I am Monkey's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you at home, you probably you probably got two thoughts on your mind. First, you're thinking, where the hell is Lightning Long Johnson? And second, you're thinking, Monkey, did you just show a Serbian film to your dad? And the answer to the second question is... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Manimal, where's Lightning Long Johnson this month? He's dead. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> don't did, worry. Did his mom we're... and dad cuddle around him in a bed and have a three-way suicide? Or... Don't worry about it. We're looking at ways to uh, reincarnate his Oh, corpse. yeah. We'll, he'll be reincarnated for next month. We'll bring him back. So, for those of you who are new to the show, maybe you just you Google a Serbian film from time to time and click on whatever pops <laughs> up, and, and you found this this time. Uh, this is a podcast, the only podcast on the internet, where Manimal and Mumkey watch the movies that the audience votes for. So every month, there's this big list of movies down in the description in a straw poll, and everybody votes on what they want us to suffer through watching. And this month, the winner, uh, by popular demand and by monkey's demand, was uh, a Serbian film. Sure was. The last three months, I have been begging and pleading with the audience to vote for this one, and they finally did it. And, well... As you can tell from my, my two co-hosts this uh, month, uh, it, it's a great movie, right, guys? You guys are excited. You're happy to be here. Didn't drain the life out of you. You still have your will to live. Um, after watching this movie, I feel uh, both ill in the stomach and okay. um, a desire to be alone and <laughs> oh, so, not so, be around. So sitting here with two people and recording a podcast for an hour is exactly what you're up for right now. I feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> what about you, Daddy? How do you feel about home. the movie? It was horrible. <laughs> what, was, what was so bad about it? I thought it'd be like, a, it's like a touching film about a father struggling to fend for his family. I thought you could relate. Uh, Yes. I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's let's very quickly go through the plot of the film. And I know you both were paying a lot of attention, so I'm gonna leave that up to you. But I'll I, I'm an I'm an expert in this movie. Okay, I've seen it over ten times. So as you guys try to explain the plot from beginning to end, I'll come and help you out if you're making mistakes or forgetting something. So, animal, um, take the lead. So, the movie starts, mm -hmm. and there's a little boy watching a porno. Mm -hmm. And his dad was the one starring in the porno. Um, so we find out that the dad was a porn star. And his name is Milos. And his name is Milos. That's right. Um, then we get a lot of awkward scenes of Milos <laughs> talking about uh, uh, masturbating and explaining to his son how you do it. And I didn't like that. Okay. <laughs> uh because his son was only eight, and it felt weird and gross. So back in the day, Milos used to be this big-time porn star, probably the biggest porn star in all of Serbia. Uh, but now he, he wants to retire. He wants to get out of it. He settled down with a beautiful wife, and now he has a, an eight-year-old son. And he, he just wants to get away from that lifestyle and, and settle down and be a simple man. Uh, but he's he's having money troubles, right? They can't afford... Yep. Uh, the son is Pitar. They can't afford his singing lessons. Uh, so then uh, one day... Milos meets up with an old porn star friend of his, some prostitute-looking woman. So Yeah, so he meets with her. She's like, yo, I met this director. He's going to give you a lot of money. He's going to change your life around. He's an artist. You're an artist. This is art. So if you do this one last job with this director, and it's going to be an, an artistic job, he'll give you enough money to pay for Pizar, and he'll, he'll be good for the rest of his yep, life. set for life. So Milos is like, okay, I'm interested in that. So... Um, do you, you want to? Do you know what happened next, Daddy O? He went and met the producer. Uh huh. And, and, and what's he like? Uh, odd. <laughs> <laughs> a regular oddball, you might say. Yep. Um, he's he's a very eccentric artist. Uh, and the director, who is the villain of the film, I think he he and Milos who. 
And, and the actor who plays Milos, the main character, he's also the writer and director of the film. So he's, yep. a, he's a triple threat, you could say. <laughs> but, but I think the two of them give genuinely good performances in the film, whereas Milos has to... Uh, his actor has to go through lots of torture, as well as being um, drugged up and enraged a lot. Whereas the director... Not the director of the film, but the director in the movie, the, the character director, he is like this eccentric, crazy person who's very eccentric, but it's it's just very creepy and entertaining at the same time. Yeah. So Milos meets up with the director guy, and he's kind of interested in the movie, um, and after he finds out how much he's going to get paid for it, he talks to his wife, and she's like, you got to do it. Just do this last job, and we'll be set for life. So he shows up on set, and we're skipping through this movie quite a bit. Um, because... He wants to know what it's about, and they won't tell him. Right. Yeah. The, the director's excuse is, uh, who wants to know the plot of a porno? Which I think is a good point. Sure. Like, when Manimal looks for porn, he's not looking for the plot. He's looking for midget, ebony bitches, right? Cut. <laughs> cut. <laughs> cut. Cut that. We're gonna, we'll cut that out in post. Uh, let's, keep, let's keep this going. Let's keep it going. Okay, so he, he shows up on... His, oh, by the way, we should mention he has a brother. His brother is a cop. Yeah. And uh, we get a scene of his brother in the kitchen with his wife. Not the brother's wife, but Milos' wife. Yep. And the brother is kind of perving on the wife, looking at her butt. While, the, while Milos is... While their son's in the kitchen yeah, as well. Yeah, he's sitting there like eating ice cream or something. Yeah, yeah, he's like right there and he's perving on his wife. And then he's uh, so overwhelmed by watching her eat an apple that he goes into the bathroom and jerks off into the sink. Yeah. Uh, but I'll, I'll get into this, because there's a lot of deeper meanings going on here that you might not understand. Um, I, I know Manuel didn't understand. I'm just too much of a simpleton yeah, to pick yeah. up on it. But I'll, I'll fill you in with my hypotheses of the film uh, once we get to the end of the plot. So Milos is he's training for this final job. Uh, he's... <laughs> He's doing his uh, his dick workouts, he's jogging, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. And he shows up on set, and it's at an orphanage for abandoned children. So now now we're getting to territory, like, okay, so far this movie has just had a lot of uh, pornography in it, okay, so that's not so bad. But now we're entering the realm of actual creepiness. Yeah. With uh, shooting a porno at an orphanage, what's going on? So Milos is walking through, and the, and the cameramen are filming him for the porno scene, and he has no idea what's going on. And he finds, like, a 12-year-old girl sitting on a stair, in a stairwell, and then, who I assume is her mother, comes in and starts yelling at her and slapping the, the shit out of her. And then, that's the end of that scene, and Milos is like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So he's kind of freaking out. You and me both, buddy. <laughs> he calls his cop brother and says, hey, can you investigate... This porn director and his crew, I, I think there some, might be something shady going on. And the brother's like, oh, yeah, I'll look into it. And he does look into it, and it turns out there's nothing shady about them. They're just, he's a very educated movie director, all of that. So the next scene that they film at the orphanage, he walks in, and um, this, is this when the woman's just getting the beat up by some guy? Oh, yes, he gets, I... Was that before, or was this like he was getting a blowjob, and then they yeah, had two screens pointing, yeah, yeah. and there's just a little girl sitting there, and, like, she's and like, then the, one of the guards comes and chokes him. Yeah, yeah, so he's yeah. he's getting a blowjob in this room, and then there's these two monitors up of like a little girl eating ice cream or something, or sucking on a popsicle, so the idea is that he's getting his dick sucked by a woman while watching a footage of a young girl sucking on something, and that's that's already just off the wall crazy as it is but then uh the woman starts um is this when she starts biting on his dick i think that was another scene that was a little later on okay so but is because, this... yeah that was later on because then in another scene uh the little girl is literally in the room okay while this is happening and then he's like i'm not doing this and he tries to back out and then, uh, and then one of the the crew members grabs and puts him in a chokehold, yeah. and the woman starts biting on his dick, and and they're telling him beat beat her, so he has to punch the woman in the face repeatedly. Which, if a woman's biting on your dick, isn't it dangerous to punch her in the face? Wouldn't that just make her clench down harder? Don't you think? Isn't there a better way to stop her from doing that? Uh, like pulling out your wallet. I don't uh, ever want to get in that position. <laughs> so hey, let's test it out. Okay. No. <laughs> Do no. you want to play the woman or the guy? Uh. Cut. <laughs> Moving on. Let's, let's get this through this thing as quick as possible. Just power through. 
Just like Milos did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after this, Milos is like, I'm done. I don't care how much money this is going to get me. I- I'm quitting. Uh, but he, he leaves. He tries to leave, and the director corners him, and he says, Hey, listen. Listen, here's the thing. Who cares what your mind thinks if your dick liked it? And I guess that's enough for Milos. He's like, okay, well, I guess I'll, I'll come back for another time. So he goes and talks to his wife, and, and they talk about it, and he's like, no, I'm quitting. I'm going to go in. I'm going to tell him I'm done. I'm yeah. through. This, is, this has gone on way too far. So he goes in, and uh, the director offers him a drink. Uh, Milos accepts, and then the director gives him this big spiel. And I think this is the, the, the author of the movie, which happens to be the director and the main actor. This is when his direct voice is coming through the character, when the, the porn director is talking to Milos. His name is Vuk, Vukmir, I think. Vukmir? Something like that. Yeah. Something along those lines. Because he's talking about... And this is this is the whole uh, conceit of the movie, I believe. About how the people of Serbia are are born getting fucked. Uh, by the government and by the police state and all of that. And I don't know a whole lot about the history of Serbia. Actually, I don't really know anything about it at all. Except that it's kind of a, a bad place to live. And it's pretty bad for the people there. And so the whole point of the movie is kind of to, it's, it's a conceit for how terrible conditions are for the people of Serbia and uh, all the bad things that happen to Milos within the film, both within the film and the film within the film. So it's like a double, sure. it's a double conceit. All those bad things are representative of what it's like to be a citizen of Serbia. So that's where I think this movie is uh, a bit deeper than people point out. People look at a Serbian film and say, oh, this is just stupid grotesque trash but i think there there are a few a few slightly deeper levels going on but we'll get into that a little later sure so the director gives him that little speech and and then he uh pulls down a projector screen and the most famous scene in the movie happens who wants to tell everybody at home about the best scene in the movie oh man nope. almost nose got his goes. finger on his nose nope, not doing it why, why do you consider that the best scene in the movie by best, I mean the most famous one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do, do you want to explain what it is? Uh, a woman giving birth. Okay. So there's a woman on a table getting birth. It's kind of shot in grainy footage, kind of an older camera. So you has that more of a real aesthetic to it rather than like a professional bang bros porno like, like Manimal would know. Uh, this is more like something you'd find on X Hamster. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Why are you getting so embarrassed? Keep it going. <laughs> so this woman's giving birth, and uh, Manimal... <laughs> I've never seen Manimal shield his eyes before with his hands. Nothing grotesques me more than the human anatomy. So we we it. see we actually see this woman giving birth. I mean, it's obviously fake, but it's like... I, mean, I don't care if it's fake or not. I still can't You see it. the baby getting squeezed out of the, the, the no-no square. Of a woman's, um... Uh, Dad, you know more about this than I do. Uh, I think you were there when I was born. Is that what it looked like? Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I don't think Manimal's ever going to be a father. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so you're like, okay, so we're watching a woman give birth. That's pretty gross. But, oh no. And Manimal already had his eyes covered at this point. But it gets worse. Because then the, the man who helped the baby come out... Uh... <laughs> He has sex with the baby. He sure did. And then the Milos is absolutely disgusted, as as any reasonable per- yep. person should be. And he storms out, and the director yells, No, Milos! It's newborn porn! Newborn porn! He's like, he's so into his artistic vision that he doesn't understand the the, <laughs> the lack of morality that goes with raping a newborn baby. Uh. <sighs> So I think another message of this film is the exploration of what is art and what is um, not art. Sure. And I think the argument here is that having sex with a newborn baby is not art. <laughs> which is, It's a pretty bold stance for the film's director to take, I think. But uh, uh, yep. <laughs> it's his first film, so he had to get noticed somehow. <laughs> So now uh, Milos is driving home. He's done. He's not doing this shit anymore. He never wants to see that director again. But uh-oh. His head's feeling kind of woozy, and his dick's super hard, and he's like, what's going on? He got drugged. The drink that the director gave him had a drug in it. It sure did. And so then Milos is at a um, at a stop sign. If they have stop signs in Serbia, I don't know. Uh-huh. He's at He stopped the car for, at some sort of sign. 
and the one of the the henchmen, one of the female henchmen, comes up and he starts fondling her boobs, and she gets in the car and drives off. And then uh, we get a whole bunch of scary images up on the screen real fast, a whole bunch of quick cuts, and then we see Milos waking up in his bed. And this is where the movie turns into what I like to call uh, an extreme version of The Hangover, that film The Hangover. So the plot of The Hangover <laughs> is that these guys get drugged, they wake up, and they have to solve the mystery of where their friend Doug is. Okay, yep. that's the plot of The Hangover. The plot of a Serbian film is that a man gets drugged, wakes up, and has, has to solve the mystery of what happened to him while he was drugged and where, most importantly, where his family is. So it's very similar to a Serbian film, I mean to uh, The Hangover in that regard. And, and he noticed it was three days after the last time he remembered. Yeah, right, right. On the radio it said tomorrow, the 18th, something was going to happen. It was, and, and that part was like very over-the-top exposition. Like the, the radio announcer, oh, tomorrow's date, which by the way is the 18th <laughs> of May. Like, okay, yeah. come on. And uh, then, uh, it go, yeah, he looks at his uh, radio and it says like the 21st or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's, and he's disheveled, his clothes are a mess, he's covered in blood. He's like, what the hell happened to me? He searches his house, his family's missing. So he, he, he starts freaking out, um, as, I mean, as any reasonable person would. I think yeah. that's, a, <laughs> that's a, uh, a phrase I'll be saying a lot during this review. And what does he do first? Does he, he, he tries to call himself? Yeah, cause he, he tries to call a few people. Yeah. He calls his wife's phone. Yeah, and he finds his wife's phone, and then he tries to call himself with it, and it, the phone is out of service. He tries to call his brother, and the phone is out of service. So he goes and gets in his car, and he's driving up to where the the porno shoot was, and he has a... What was that thing he had? The tire iron. Tire, yeah, tire iron. iron. He's, just, he's like, I'm going to fucking kill these people. And he shows up, and the place is abandoned. Uh, but he walks into this room and finds a bed and a painting splattered with blood. And uh, and a bunch of blood on the floor, and then he starts having flashbacks of what happened, and and this is this is where it's going to get tricky talking about the movie because it now exists of there's like the present Milos and him trying to solve the mystery, and then it's also half flashbacks of him uh, reliving or remembering what happened or watching it on a tape. So what happened in that room, animal? You win. He was drugged up, and they had a girl chained to a bed. And he had sex with her. And they're giving him, like, they say it's a drug, it's, um, uh, uh, what, what's that? What's that human drug that makes you horny? Viagra? Yeah, yeah, they say it's like Viagra for bulls, and they're, like, injecting it straight into his bloodstream. So yeah. he's just, he's just an animal at this point. He's he's not in control at all. And, uh, that's important to note later on for my, uh, for my review of the film. <laughs> <laughs> and he has an earpiece. Yeah, yeah, and then they're able to uh, the, just basically tell him... The porn director's always in his ear saying, Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, hit her, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this is beautiful art, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. So he's, he's uh, got... The, there's this woman, and she's not part of this. I imagine it's just some woman that they kidnapped because she's chained to the bed and she's screaming and she's and Milos is raping her. Yeah. And then uh, he, he's beating her with his fists and she's screaming bloody murder and it's very unpleasant to watch. But then it gets even more unpleasant because they hand Milos a machete. Yep. And... Then he... And then, and then that's when Manimal yelled, Cut! Yep. But it was inappropriate because then he did cut. It, it was he bad timing her. because <laughs> then, he, then he cut her head off and I was like, oh no. Do you think... Uh, one of the assistant directors was yelling cut during that scene and, and the actor was just, just so into it. <laughs> he just, just started cutting faster. He's like, no, no, stop, stop. Oh, oh. Oh, wait. Oh, I guess I guess this is part of the movie now. I guess he, Milos cuts off her head. Ugh. Oh, See, in, no. In Serbia, if an actress gets killed, nobody cares. That's kind of the message of the movie is that they have to do extreme things in order to get noticed. If this movie didn't have a scene of newborn porn or, or of all the other bad stuff, you would have never heard of this movie. So he had to put these terrible images and, and scenes into the film to get it noticed so that people around the world would notice the trouble in, Ser in Serbia. It's very important. It's deep. It's art. God damn it. Right, guys? No. Right, Dad? No, it's just disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. I will convince somebody that this movie is good. I might be the only person in the world who likes it. But So Milos, uh, after remembering that he raped a woman and cut off her head, he searches around some more and finds a video camera and a bunch of tapes. And uh, me and Manimal were enjoying the way that the tapes were marked. Cause <laughs> they had them 
They just had a, instead of like having a, a brief description of what you eat, like written was, in, the, written in words with yeah like written letters word or something and, like that. It just had like pictures of dicks drawn on. Yeah, them. yeah. <laughs> like like a little cartoon dick was drawn on, or like um, there's like a hand with two fingers sticking out and like a smiley face on it. Yeah, <laughs> just imagine like cataloging this in like a drawer or something like that, and the director being like, "Oh hey, uh, bring me uh, one of those tapes." Oh, yeah, which one do you want? Oh, the one with the, you know, the dick on it. Bring me the one with the dick on it. <laughs> that's half of them, <laughs> Half sir. of them have dicks on it. Oh, the one that's bending slightly to the left. <laughs> yeah. Not an extreme amount, just like a slight little curve. So what you're saying is the director could have organized his tapes better than just drawing a little picture on each one to differentiate between them. Uh, it doesn't matter. So Milos watches a couple of the tapes, and it's, it's a bunch of fucked up stuff, like a woman... With, with her arms chained up above her head, and she had all of her teeth pulled out with was pliers. Was that supposed to be his friend? That was his brother. No, 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 the girl. Was the girl supposed to be his friend? No, no, no. was trying to get him out? Oh, it, actually, it might be. I don't remember. Because, um... That's we, what I was thinking. We go from a video clip of, um, one of the, uh, one of the goons, uh, got a clip of... Uh, his porn star friend talking from to the, the beginning. Director. Yeah, from the beginning. Who got him involved? Uh, talking to the director, saying this is wrong. Um, this is an art. You've gone way overboard. Although she's kind of in on it because she says, "If you wanted," she, she's upset because they drugged Milos, and she told them, "If you if you wanted him to do this, you should have just cut off his son's ear or kidnapped the son or something." But now you just have like um, a crazy fuck monster in Milos when yeah. he, Milos is a true porn artist. He should have control over his mind. So she's not upset that bad things are happening to Milos. She's upset that he got drugged. Yeah. And it's ruining the integrity of the art. So she's not that great of a she, person. She's either. a bad person. Yeah, she is. But, um... So you think that's her who got her... She, you think that was her who got all of her teeth pulled out then? I do, because she's like, I'm taking Milos and we're, we're leaving. It's, we're it's hard home. to recognize somebody when they have all their teeth pulled out. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, they're, and, they're and they're chained they up and it's dark. They don't really show her face, but I'm pretty sure it was like her same hair. Yeah, it could be. And yeah, it... And then uh, a, a man in a mask who we... Well, I guess I won't reveal who it is, although I kind of already did. Uh, he walks in and he... Uh, he receives the gummiest blowjob of all time, I suppose. I think yep. he actually strangles her with his dick. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure yeah, she probably, dies. Yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. she's dead after that. And, and they pull that out her teeth like so it. that she couldn't bite the dick off. That's yeah. suffocating her. All right. Moving on. So we should, we should, uh, I'm going to have a second straw poll with all of the terrible things that happen to people in this movie, and people can vote on uh, which one would be the worst way to die. So uh, teethless um, dick suffocation will be one of the options. We'll also have getting raped in, in a machete cutting through your neck. Uh, which one are you going to vote for so far, Manimal? <laughs> Me? I'd rather have my, my head cut off with a machete than to suffocate on a dick. But that's uh, just me. At least it's quick and painless. Yeah. Yeah. Suffocation takes a little while. All right. Especially on a dick. Yep. <laughs> sure does. So next, he's he's going through all the tapes, and he's uncovering the mysteries of what happened. And um, oh, what's the next important thing? There's a tape of one of the bodyguards raping him while he's unconscious, which is grotesque. Um, then we get to a tape of him, and this is one of the creepiest parts of the movie. He's in a house with this old woman and her... Mm. And it might be the same 12-year-old girl from the rest of the movie. I'm the pretty sure it is. That. I'm pretty sure it is. And the, the old woman is saying, um, I think her son was named Ryko. That I'm going to say it's Ryko. She says, she's talking to, to... I was about to say Manimal. She's talking to Milos. <laughs> She says, oh, oh, thank God must have sent you here because poor Reiko, this girl's father was, he was a brave warrior, but he died and, and now he, he can't do for her what my father did for me. And, and the implication is that in this family, the daughter gets her virginity taken by her father. And uh, they were upset that the father was dead and that they couldn't, but now they have a brave man like Milos to do it. And, uh. The, the drugs effects are starting to kind of wear off and Milos is, is kind of aware of what's going on. He's looking around, he sees the cameras and the director like urging him on and he looks at the 12 year old girl smiling at him and he's like, oh hell no. And he jumps up and he grabs a knife and he holds it up to his hard dick and he's like, I'll cut it off. I'll cut it off. And everybody's freaking out. It's pandemonium. The star's dick's about to get cut off. What are we going to do? And then uh, Milos jumps out the window. Yeah. Which, do they... 
Because he's naked, right? No, no, he's no, not naked. He's he pulls not. out his dick. I was like, where did he get his clothes? But he always had his clothes. So he's running um, through the slums of Serbia, and it's it's kind of a poverty-stricken place. I mean, it's, it's not good. There's, like, cages on everything, like on all the windows. And he runs into a store, and he, he steals um, a phone card so that he can use the payphone, and he calls his brother and says, hey, I'm, I'm at this street. Something really bad's happening. Please come get me. And Milos is just, he's sitting, waiting in an alley, just uh, hub, uh, cuddled up, uh, or not cuddled, but huddled up. Yeah. And he's just, like, freaking out. He's, like, hyperventilating. He's terrified. And that's, uh, it's, it's some of, it's it's pretty good acting, I think. I, I He seemed like he was genuinely terrified sure. to me. And then there's this woman who walks by, and these two guys are hitting on her, and, and the drugs haven't worn off, so Milos is sitting in the corner jerking off to this girl. And the two guys see him, and they're like, Hey, what you doing jerking off in the alley? And they start beating the shit out of him. And then car pulls up, and you're like, Oh, good, the brother's there to save him. Uh, no, no, no. It's, not, it's not the brother. No, it's the director. The director found him, and they take him. And, uh, and this is still in flashback. We haven't gotten back to the present really yet. Yep. And they, they take him to this warehouse. So now uh, present Milos remembers all of this and he goes to the warehouse and he finds a room where he made a, uh, one of the female uh, accomplices um, he made her vagina explode by injecting her with some of the drug straight into her neck. Um, and he tried to escape at this point because he they injected it with more of the drug but before it took full effect, he tried to escape again, but then they they got control of him. And that takes us to the big finale of the movie. When they go into the room, and there's two bodies lying on a table, and they're completely covered, and they have hoods over their heads, so you he, he can't see who they are. And the director's like, yeah, yeah, go have sex with them. And uh, Milos, he's so drugged up and crazy from just getting a new dose that he starts uh, having sex with one, and then he notices that the other one is even smaller, so he goes over to that one. And then the masked man from the the tooth-pulling video comes in and starts having sex with the bigger one. The mask is pulled off, uh, and it, it was extremely painful, I believe, to pull off the mask. Because uh, he, he was a big guy. I'm not, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for Bane posting I'm not today. In the mood I'm just... For Bane. <laughs> And it's revealed that it's the brother, the cop brother, which is important because one of the themes of the film is that the police in Serbia are corrupt and uh, that is symbolized by the brother being a cop and being one of the most corrupt people in the film because he's not drugged up. He's doing this of his own accord he is. because he was jealous of his porn star brother being able to have a beautiful wife and a happy family, whereas he couldn't even keep his dick up to have sex with a prostitute. So the cop is doing this for revenge and because he wants to bang Milos' his wife. And so he's he's one of the scariest villains in the movie. Although everybody working for the porn director and the porn director, they're they're nuts. Yeah, they're absolutely nuts. So uh, then they pull off the masks of the people who are getting fucked, and it's revealed that the brother is having sex with his wife, and Milos finds out that he is uh, butt raping his own eight year old son. And uh, that really sobers him up pretty quick, and he realizes, oh my god. Oh, mo, my God. Yep. And uh, that's when all the violence of the film <laughs> begins. And everybody just gets killed in a bloody mess. Milos jumps up and starts um, smashing the director's head into the ground yep. and cracking his skull open. The wife jumps up and is biting the brother's neck. And like she like bites out his voice box or something. Yeah, she really goes for the juggler and she yeah. gets it. Yeah, she sure does. Uh, the son, he's just he's just laying there with foam coming out of his mouth. He doesn't really do much. Uh, Milos gets a gun and, and shoots all of the guys except for one, and then he finishes his, um, the last guy off by punching his sunglasses off, seeing that one of his eyeballs are missing, and then he sticks his dick in the eye socket to kill the guy. And it's, uh, it's pretty badass and cool, right? Yep. No. Oh. So they kill all the bad guys, and all that's left are Milos, his wife, and his son. Um, she's scared of him. She tries to stab him, and he, he knocks her out by punching her. And he's still pretty much over, under control of the drug. He takes them home and uh, locks them in a downstairs room, and then he goes and falls asleep on his bed. And that's where he wakes up three days later. Yeah. So now Milos knows where his family is. He goes to find them, 
and uh, they they're just all like terrified, and he gives him a hug, and then there's I imagine like they they stay alive for another day because they're kind of just sitting at home. They they wash themselves up, and they're just depressed and terrified and suffering from PTSD and all these horrible things. And Milos is just like staring at his handgun thinking, I'm, I'm going to kill myself. I got to, I got to do it. Which in this situation, I think is the only thing you can mm-hmm. do. Uh, and then he and the wife have the mutual decision of lying in bed together with their son and uh, lying in a way where that Milos can pull the trigger and uh, the bullet will kill all three of them. Uh, so they do that, and then the big, the big twist at the end, the big Inception top spinning moment, is that uh, we see the shot of the three of them lying dead in bed together, and then it shows uh, a new camera crew filming a new porno, uh, recording them dead, and uh, the director of that film says to the to one of the the men, start with the little one, and he starts unzipping his pants, and smash cut to credits, Smash Mouth starts playing, but hey now, but an all star, <laughs> the. The people at the end of this last scene were coming out of the director's house. Yeah, towards the beginning. So, so this was all part of the plan. Yes, they, they, yeah. they must be like the main people. Mm-hmm. So the the crazy director who we see throughout the film, he's so obsessed with his art, and he sees all of this as art, that he is willing to die for it. So he planned to get killed by Milos. All of this, everything in the movie was all part of the plan of the higher-ups. And I believe those people represent the Serbian government. Sure. Uh, and, and how they they do all these terrible things to their citizens just for their personal gain. Um, and it, I, I, I didn't take notes or anything. Someday I'm going to do an in-depth review of this film to prove to everybody that it is a little deeper than surface-level um, gore and shock. Because um, there's a lot of things people don't pick up on on their first couple viewings of it, and I've seen it. <laughs> more times than probably most people or <laughs> more times than anybody <laughs> more times than you want to admit <laughs> no I, I'm, I'm proud I that know, I've seen I this movie ten are. times dude. I know you are but uh, that's the plot of a Serbian film so now that we've gone through the plot we can uh, very uh, briefly explain whether or not we enjoyed the film now now, dad I know you have been just itching to, to let everybody know how much you love the film and that it inspired you to become a filmmaker so uh, just in a, in a brief statement, what what are your final thoughts about the film? Would you recommend it to anybody? Uh, my final thoughts would be, I can't think of a better way to spend my Sunday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of uh, malice in your voice when you said that. <laughs> See, when you think of father and son bonding, do you think of watching this film, or would you... <laughs> <laughs> We've got to go play catch outside. <laughs> going outside, having a good old catch, <laughs> go, Share, we, sharing a beer together. We go bowling. You can teach me how to smoke a cigar. Take me to a strip club, or would you rather watch a Serbian film? Uh, I'd rather do some other things. <laughs> <laughs> go see, go see what Patchy's up to. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why I had two sons, in case one of them was a fuck up. Spent his time watching these shitty movies. <laughs> Manimal, if if you had to recommend this movie, which what type of person would you recommend it to? Because I know we already know you loved it, but who do you think should check this out? Should the morbidly curious check it out, or would you say no? Even if you're curious, don't watch it. It's not worth it. I wouldn't. Me personally, I didn't think it was worth it. I did. You didn't like it to, at all. I tried coming in with an open mind, and no, no. you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, I legitimately did. I legitimately watching the movie. I tried keeping an open mind, and it was just for me a lot of it through up until like the last forty minutes. I was just bored. Yeah, so that that's a big problem with the film is that until it you get is. to the hangover kind of yeah. the, the mystery element of trying to solve what happened, it's it, just it's really... a lot of build up and a lot of exposition, and it can be boring. It's like a lot of boring exposition mixed in with scenes of graphic pornography. Yeah. So it's it's off putting and a little boring, but once you get to that second half of the movie, that's when it goes into high gear, and that's what it's famous for is all the stuff from the middle onwards. But I, I will agree the opening. It's it's gonna be boring, and then people will be so bored that they'll wake up from their nap and and then see a newborn <laughs> baby getting raped, and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa yeah. who changed the channel? Yeah. Uh, 
So no, I wouldn't. Uh... You wouldn't recommend it to any audience. No. Oh man, that, that hurts me because nope. I I love this movie so much. It's just, it's here's why I like it. Here's a here's a reason why. Because a lot of people are saying, "Oh, I can't wait to hear Monkey try to defend this movie." The movie has a moral center, and that is Milos, the character. Now, if it was a movie about just a terrible, disgusting asshole who thought that raping and killing people was fun and he was just having the time of his life the whole time, then I would agree. This movie would be insepid. It'd be stupid. It'd be disgusting. So nymphomaniac? Sure. <laughs> That's an independent woman having <sighs> sex with men on trains. That is fucking shit trying to disguise itself as art but, anyways. But the fact that Milos is a victim, and that's a, that's another big theme of the movie is victims. The the porn director says, we're all victims here in Serbia. Uh, he He's doing this against his will. He's been drugged up, and he's suffering, and he's a character who, who suffers terribly. And I argue he might be one of the most... Uh, out of all of film, he might be the character who suffers the most uh, physically, emotionally, and mentally. Because just, I can't, I can't think of a character who worse things happen to. Is there a character who rapes their own son and then has to live with that? I, no, he doesn't have to live with it. He killed him. Well, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. He, he he's so live. tormented, he has to kill his entire family along with himself. I mean, it's it's just, it's heartbreaking. And that scene with him sitting in the alleyway, just shaking with fear, uh, it, it was touching to me. And I, I think that the fact that Milos is a character who is doing this against his will and he's a victim is what makes it um, uh, thrilling. And it's not just disgusting because the character himself feels disgusted with what is happening. There's scenes where he vomits as he remembers what he did. And he's he feels so guilty and, and upset with himself. And I think that's... What drives the film is uh, Milos' emotional journey through this terrible happening. One of the worst things that could ever happen to a person. Ever. On film. And that's what makes the film so interesting to me. Uh, but despite all that, I'm sure you would still say, no, nobody should ever watch this. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I think you can... Uh, I don't, there's, there's probably going to be 2,000 views on this video in total. One of you 2,000... I hope I convinced somebody to check this movie out. It's, this is in its entirety uploaded to YouTube, and I will have a link in the description so that you can go check it out if you are interested. Anyway, uh, let's finish off the discussion of the movie by giving our final ratings. We do a rating system here uh, at Monkey and Manimal of uh, 1 to 10, 10 being uh, uh, the best movie of all time, and 1 being utter shit, this is garbage, and don't watch it, there's no redeeming qualities. So on that scale... Uh, we'll start with Manimal. What rating would you give this film? I give it one toilet full of vomit. God damn. Out of how many toilets full of vomit? How many ever toilets full of vomit <laughs> it takes for me to feel better. I, I'm not kidding when I legitimately say that my stomach is li literally upset. Like, I'm not feeling well right now. <laughs> I, think the, I think they can tell. Yeah. What about I, you, Dad? What, what rating would you give the film? And keep in mind, uh, in the history of this show, I'm the only one who has ever taken the ratings seriously, so feel free to make up any random bullshit you want. Well, I would say out of film quality, if you can get by all the gross stuff that probably you should not see, <laughs> uh, I'd say I'd give it a maybe a three. So you're considering like the, the performances and the, the cinematography and the music and all of that? Yeah, some of that. I think it's it's a very competent film. You have to give it that. Sure. All, all the shots look nice. They have lots of cool things going on with the focus of the camera. I think even though it's in a different language and you have to read the subtitles, I think this, the good performances still shine through even though you yeah. don't understand what somebody is saying. Mm -hmm. As, especially Milos and uh, Volkmir. I think, oh man, there's just so much creepiness to Volkmir and so much uh, crazy passion coming from uh, uh, Milos when he's drugged up. So I, I think the performances are great. And the music, I, I really like the soundtrack. I think it it's like this nice um, synthetic, um, I, I don't know all the hipstery words to describe <laughs> that genre of music, but it, it sounds pretty cool. It's pretty intense. So, so on a cinematogric, uh, cinemato cinematography, on a movie level, <laughs> you'd give it a 3 out of 10? Production level. Yes. Okay. Well, that's. I, but I would say, even though we are two adults, you probably, it's not a good movie to watch with... 
your offspring. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that's the that's the fun of this episode is that I watched it with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> you have to live with that fact forever now that you that you guys. Watch Although, I mean, to be fair. When you found out that I saw Wolf of Wall Street without you, you were like, oh, what? We could have seen that together. Wolf of Wall Street has a lot of sex in it, too. So what makes this different? Uh, uh, it really wasn't the sex. It was just the... I don't know. Mixing sex, violence, and uh, your offspring all together is not... Um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> It's context, not a good feeling. It, of it, it started off kind of, you know, pornish. Watching porn. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is not the first thing I think of when I watch porn is my son. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because when I watch porn, Dad, the first thing I think of I'm going to go ahead and cut. cut. <laughs> Manuel doesn't want to hear this. Nope. Nope. Go continue. We need to get the air back on. <laughs> yeah, it's, get, it's getting toasty. Yeah, I do turn off the air conditioning now because I don't like the buzzing in the background. Okay, my final rating... Uh, I'm not going to go crazy and give it a 10 out of 10, because it's, it's not a perfect movie. It is boring for the first half. Yeah, um, I'd say more than the first half. Y- you think people getting raped and killed is boring? You turn on you turn on the news from Detroit and no, you think this is boring? I'd probably say about a good... Like I said, we're getting into like the last 30 to 40 minutes before the movie finally starts picking up. Yeah, okay. Well, I- I'd give the movie good a solid 8 out of 10. If you consider all the things we discussed before, but uh, uh, let's get moving on to the next segment of the show. We've I've got a, a few uh, fan comments I wanted to to read off real quick because uh, we we do a fan mail segment. Uh, let's pull those up. Okay, here's a here's a comment from uh, and th- these were all from the last episode. All right. From Weeaboo Fish says, "Thanks for letting me vote for multiple films, Mumkey. I voted for every f- movie other than a Serbian film. Well, fuck you. We watched it anyway. Thanks. Yeah. I so appreciate you. Weeaboo Fish, uh, go fuck yourself, asshole. Uh, we got one from Keep up the good work. <laughs> we got one from uh, Lucasaur who says, "I expect a Kermit the Frog voicemail in every video." It's funny that he says that because uh, Kermit actually called in to this episode. No, he didn't. As, yeah, he left a voicemail no. again. Here, I'll, let me see if I can find it. Uh, computer sounds, computer yeah, sounds. Beep pop, beep pop. Oh, here it is. Hey guys, Kermit the Frog here. I just wanted to Isn't say. Isn't this funny? Isn't this funny? I just wanted. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just wanted to say I. There you go. I There's really, your Kermit. I really like that Lightning Long Johnson fellow, and I can't wait to hear him he in the next like episode. You. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, Kermit. Uh, Lightning Long Johnson isn't isn't in this episode. Oh no! Oh, that's too. How are you talking <laughs> to a voice recording? Dude, technology has improved a lot. Uh, next oh, comment. That, that's too bad. I I hope Lightning is back for the next one. Oh, don't worry, Kermit. I'm sure he will be. Thanks, Monkey. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> if he didn't, like, if he didn't tell you that was Kermit the Frog, would you guess that was Kermit the Frog? <laughs> that is the worst Kermit the Frog impersonation I've ever heard in my life. It, it sounds just like him because it is him. It's a real voicemail. Oh, I'm not making this shit up. I'm Kermit the Frog. Here. <laughs> See, there he is. He called again. Uh, you, you do realize Jim Henson died, right? <laughs> oh. Uh, am I honoring his, his legacy? <laughs> okay, I've, got, I've only got one more. Let's go ahead and pay tribute to him. Uh, so this one is from the goon who supports me on Patreon. Thank you very much, goon. He says, "Guys, we're supposed to make monkey suffer here, not manimal. Fuck you, monkey man. <laughs> uh, but fuck you, goon, because I won. Because we had to watch a Serbian film, and manimal promised he would never watch it in his life, and we did. We sure did. All right, that's all the the viewer mail we got this week. If you want us to read your comment, post one down in the comments of this video, and uh, maybe we'll bring it in for the next episode." Finally, before we all melt from the heat, let's move on to the final segment of the show where we bore everybody to death by recommending movies we actually like that we think you should go check out. Uh, Let's start off with you, Dad. What movie do you like that you think everybody out there, if they haven't seen it yet, they should? Uh, Serbian film. (laughs) Dude, that's still my bit. I would say Rambo 2. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I'm all about that. Uh, that's a, a good one. So, cause I do have a lot of younger fans listening to this, probably people still in high school, so they might not have seen Rambo 2 when it came out, and they might have not seen it since. So do you think they should go watch the first Rambo before, or can they just skip to 2? Uh, you, 
you can skip to two. I mean, but I mean, if you watch the first one, it'll give you a little bit more about the background of Rambo. But now, is there a scene where Rambo has sex with his son? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then how can you recommend it? I mean, come on. That's, okay, so Rambo 2, from, straight from the, not the monkey's uncle, but the monkey's father. We should, oh yeah, I guess monkey's uncle can't because he's in prison, huh? What about you, Manimal? What movie, what movie would you like to um, recommend? Well, this episode, Manimal had to suffer. So how about on the next show, guys? Everyone go ahead. Get on Stroud. Oh, no! Go ahead. Get your vote in for Only God Forgives. Oh, God damn it. We're going to make Monkey suffer on this <sighs> next one. I hate Only God Forgives. That movie is boring and shit. That movie is a work of art. <laughs> and I I will note that I uh, for the straw poll this week, I'm usually it's 30 movies, but I think that's way too many for everybody to choose from. So I'm going to uh, lower it down to like the 10 or 15 uh, most voted ones, and I guess I'll put only God forgives on there yeah. just so that I can have, I can prove that the fans like me more and they won't vote for only God forgives. So that's why I'm putting it on there so that I can prove that they don't give a shit about what you want, manimal. Go ahead. Prove him wrong. Prove that I am the main guy of this show. Oh. <laughs> okay. So is that your recommendation of what they should watch is go vote for only God forgives? Yeah. That's, that was your recommendation last week. Vote for it. <laughs> or last month, I let's mean. Get, let's get it going. Okay. Now, Check it out. Let's get down to a real recommendation, okay. Rambo 2 is fine. Only God Forgives is fine. But here is... If you, if you want to have a double feature... How do I unplug this mic? How do I <laughs> now, unplug this mic? If you want to have a double feature of mediocrity, you can watch those two. But if you want to watch a true film, true kenography, there's a little-known indie film called... A Serbian Only film. God forgive. <laughs> no! <laughs> a Serbian film. It's about a retired porn star named Milos, right? Hey, let's just go through the plot. I'll explain what happens. God damn it. And then everybody at home, all you gotta do is hit replay, go back to the beginning of this video, and listen through it all the way again. I and, wanna shove this and slide whistle down my throat and die. <laughs> Dude, you spoiled the slide whistle. I was gonna introduce it with lightning. Anyway, uh, and real quick, since Manimal said to vote for Only God Forgives, I'm going to... I don't remember what's on the list. Um... Go vote for Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, vote for that one. That's what I want to watch next month. Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah, I'd watch that. Yeah, good. Don't vote for Only God Forgives. No, nah, vote for Only God Forgives. Nope, don't do that. <laughs> Remember, guys, I suffered this month. It's only fair Monkey has to suffer <laughs> next month. So, that's all we have for this month. If you missed Lightning Long Johnson, I hope Monkey's dad made up for him. I certainly think he did in spades. Uh, but for Monkey and Manimal's movie missions, I have been Monkey Jones. I have been Manimal. And I am Monkey's dad. Reg <laughs> I am regretfully the father of this disgusting human being. Right, Dad? No. Aw. Should have thrown him off a mountain when he was still a baby. Like like Oedipus' dad tried to? Yeah. Well, he didn't really throw him off a mountain. He pierced his ankles together and then and then left him for dead. Bye, everybody, on that happy <laughs> note. Goodbye, see you next month.